Welcome, I'm going to give a brief demonstration of how to process a sample on the Spectro Q230 laser net fine particle counter, wear classifier, and ferrous monitor. Before we begin, I'd just like to point to the schematic briefly and explain what the components are. The sample is drawn up through a sipper tube, passes a 100 micron filter, which filters out large particulate, and passes into the instrument. The first piece of instrumentation is our ferrous monitor, which gives a particle count for all ferrous particles, 25 microns and larger. That is this particular, the flow goes through this tubing and then the individual ferrous events or particle count occurs within this magnetometer. Then as the sample continues to flow, it goes into the flow cell. The LNF flow cell provides a, a light, a laser generated light that passes through the sample itself and then is imaged on the rear panel where there's a CCD detector. Just like a digital camera, it records and images each individual particle. Finally, as the, the solvent sample continues to flow, it passes into the larger magnetometer where it fills roughly a three milliliter volume and there the accumulated total ferrous is measured with the, this magnetometer. Let me proceed to how you operate and measure a sample. As with any particle counter, sample preparation is an important part. It's recommended that you agitate the sample for 30 seconds. This can, of course, be automated with a laboratory shaker. Once your 30 seconds are up, because with vigorous shaping, I've injected some air bubbles. It's necessary to put it into an ultrasonic bath in order to dislodge and remove the air particles. The ultrasonic is done for 30 seconds, not longer. If you let it sit too long, particles that are now suspended from that vigorous shaping will settle out to the bottom and you won't get an accurate particle count. So once 30 seconds are up, you're ready to process. simply lift the zipper tube of the LNF. Go to your software and start test. There's two different ways of measuring a sample. One is a simple start test which you would use if you're doing a sample whereby you will enter a sample number that can then be logged with the sample results and tracked. Another way of measuring a sample is for a sample that's taken from a specific asset. In that case, we could use the measure asset screen. That has the advantage so when you measure a sample and track it against an asset is that over time, you can build up a trend history of measurements over time for that particular asset. It enables what's called asset management. We'll run this one as a simple sample. So you go and click on start test. There's some options on this screen. The only one that's really required is the entry lab number. Uh, you can select a dilution ratio. It is not necessary to dilute samples up to 320 centistoke with the LNF. There are some cases on extraordinarily dirty samples where it might be advantageous to dilute a sample. Nonetheless, with the very wide dynamic range of the LNF, which has the largest saturation limit of any commercially available particle counter, uh, it's, it's rarely necessary. So I'm going to enter a simple lab number. I'll call it sample one, two, three, six, five, eight. Select eight. Now the sample you can see is drawn up through this, the zipper tube. Again, this is the zipper tube that there's a 100 micron filter there, filtering it out. The simple peristalsis pump draws the sample through the instrument and out to a drain. Okay, it's now telling me to remove the zipper arm from the bottle. And then insert solvent in order to flush. So we finished our flush cycle, and this is the result screen. We magnify that. What we have here on the basic 
tab here is the particle count itself. Here the ISO codes are summarized. There's a previous ISO code. If one was to run it as an asset, it would then compare it to the previous ISO code. But we just read it as a straight sample, so that's the current measurement. So the ISO codes, particles greater than four, greater than six, greater than 14 microns. You can see that that's a fairly dirty sample with 470,000 particles greater than four microns with an ISO code of 26, 24, and 17. A variety of reporting codes are available. Navair, CHARN, HAL, SAE, etc. The most common is the ISO representation. So that's the particle count results in terms of the basic ISO codes. There's also a measurement of non-metallics. It showed that there's 136 particles that are non-metallic greater than 20 microns. That's a parameter that comes out of the, the LNF wear image capability. Um, and I'll go over a few of the wear images. Basically what happens is that the LNF images all, and you can see the shape classification according to whether it's a fatigue particle, a cutting particle, a sliding wear particle, non-metallic, which is typically an oxide such as dust or dirt, and silicon dioxide, uh, water droplets, fibers, air bubbles, etc. One can actually print out these image maps. You can see in that sample, there was 187 images. Again, that's 187 particles larger than 20 microns. And then you can actually filter, if you're only interested in fatigue wear, you can get an image of all the various platelets. That's the typical traditional shape of what a fatigue particle would look like. You can search by, sort by cutting. Cutting is this curved C-shaped curlicule. Non-metallics, which have a, a typical void in the middle because silicon dioxide, sand, is actually a crystalline structure and it's uh, translucent. So some of the light gets through, some of it doesn't. And that way we can discern whether it's a non-metallic. Uh, a traditional particle counter has not this capability. Can't discern contaminants from actual wear particles. The LNF allows that. And finally, you can look at fibers, which are these long strings, typically from mechanical seals that are starting to fall apart. So that's a brief overview of the wear classification and why we can actually generate actual images. And we've covered the particle count in terms of the basic ISO codes. Now, the capabilities of the LNF to be a wear monitor uh, is accomplished two ways. I talked briefly about the two types of magnetometers. One gives a total ferrous measurement in parts per million, and the other gives the actual ferrous particle count to complement your total particle count. So let's look at those results. We looked at the wear images. You can see here that not only did we capture the image, but there's an actual count of the cutting, severe sliding, fatigue, non-metallic, and fibers. Additionally, we look at the ferrous tab, you can see that this had no large ferrous, and so there's no ferrous in this particular sample. Now we can run another sample with the ferrous validation standard, and we'll do that just now, just to make sure that in fact uh, this particular sample we ran had no ferrous. If I like the results of the test, or I think they're, they're reasonable, I can click save. So we can look now at how to get data out you can generate a standard report, and to do that, we'll just pull up a sample. So you can either print the report, in which case you get a standard selection of, you know, if you had made notes on the sample, you could print that. Uh, you can print the wear images filter out whether you just want one page or two pages of the actual wear images themselves. And this is a standardized report which gives you the ISO 4406 codes, the NASA and the NAVAIR codes as well. 
particle count and size distribution. Some representative sample maps as well, as well as the distribution of the individual wear counts. Now, if more than a simple report is interested, you can actually export into a uh, CSV file. So if I wanted to export the results of this file, I can either export a single file or multiple samples. It makes no matter, you get to select that. Select export, that batches it off into a file, which we'll pull off here. So with a few clicks of the button, you can export either the data from a single sample or all of your samples, an entire database, and then open it up in Excel and be able to prepare your data for statistical analysis. We'd like to demonstrate one other capability of the instrument. This is the splash screen from the new Spectro Scientific tab, which is part of Emerson's Machinery Health Management software, AMS version 5.61. It enables you to control the actual operation of the Spectro LNF instrument, as well as the operation of the Q3050 viscometer and the operation of the Q1100 fluid scan. It operates very straightforward. It allows an operator to operate all three instruments from the front panel and from the display of this computer, and then allows you to seamlessly it imports the data. So there's no manually importing. There's no necessary for a flash drive to export data from your fluid scan and then to import it into the AMS database. So it's a very straightforward operation.